Hey, Coach, have a seat. We're ready for you. I like it. How are we all doing today? Good to see you all. Fire away, everybody. Fire away. Coach, just what did you learn from your team? What did you say about your team after the game and then the way they practiced? That, that the young men are very resilient, that they understand the process that's in place, and they have a lot of respect for this game. And, and they know that every time you come out and play, you're only going to be as good as your last play. So it's great to see how they really came back and got back into the swing of things and wanted to get back into the swing of things uh, just to be able to do what we call fess it and fix it. So they, they fessed it and were very accountable for their errors, their mistakes, their performance. And they were going to do and are going to work through this week and do everything we can to make sure that it's fixed. When you look at the tape, just what allowed you to have so much success in the run game? Uh, a lot of it just uh, our cleats were not on the ground. That, that was probably the biggest thing, one of our major points of emphasis here coming up. We have to have our cleats in the ground and make sure our eyes are in the right place and we can fit things up. Was that just a result of, of the pace they're playing with, or, or how would you describe it? I think some of it had to do, had to do with some of the motion shifts and, and things like that. And, and we just have to make sure our guys are just really wired in to being able to be patient during all those motions and shifts, but also having enough urgency to be able to get the defense called the line, then adjust it and get your cleats in the ground. You've been really pressed with your secondary, Liz, and three original starters. Uh, is there any, uh, any news on people coming back? I know Perryman didn't play very much against UCLA. Any, any updates? Well, I, I think slowly but surely we're going to have some individuals coming out of the kennel. So we are extremely excited. But the, the, I think the one thing that is really good is we know that the players, from their perspective, they're doing everything they can to get back as soon as they can. So we know from a coaching standpoint, we're going to really, really, really be aggressive at coaching the guys that we do have. And slowly but surely, everybody's going to start to come back. Kurt, still have a chance to play again? Yeah, it's kind of, he'll probably be some of the same same scenario that we that we had with him last week. You, you know, when you've been gone, you kind of have to take some of those baby steps with the with the high performance players. How much were you able to use them just a series? Uh, it was a couple couple series. Like you mentioned, obviously, there's been a lack of depth in the secondary, and I'm curious. One guy who has played a lot in his career is Cam Williams, and we haven't seen a ton of him. Just where's Cam been at in his progression? Cam's Cam's in, in in the scenario of being able to still grow and and, and develop. Uh, probably the biggest thing I, I think that when you look at some of the guys at the safety position, uh, th those guys have been able to give us the best chance to be able to be successful. The guys that have been on on the football field at this point in time. After looking at the film, what are some things that really jumped out at you that you really need to emphasize in cleaning up before Arizona? Takeaways. Takeaways. we got to get the football. Third downs. We have to get off the football field on third down. We, 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 there were probably seven scenarios where it was third down and long. We've got to be able to get off the football field, and we have to be able to make our play at the point of attack. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is absolutely the major point of contention that we're rolling with and going into this week of practice. Is there a common theme among all of those plays? A lot of them happened in the first half, third and eight, third and ten, third and eleven, where you guys just can't get off the field. Is there one thing that was consistent with them? No, not one thing. That, well, I guess the one thing that may have been consistent was just us not making our play at the point of attack. Um, we had bodies there, people where they were supposed to be. Now we just have to have to continue to make our play. And the, the tackling problems that you guys had Friday night, I mean, did you – Think that as well, the tackling was an issue. No, but that, the, the, missing a couple of tackles, that's the first time that showed up with guys being in space at the point of attack. So that was more of a, of a surprise to us because historically we had been pretty good uh, tackling at the point of attack. So it's going to be something that we just have to reshape and retool and make sure that that's going to be another point of emphasis this, this week in practice. Did, did you get any explanation from the officials on what happened with that defensive holding personal <laughs> foul? sequence there. <laughs> I don't know if we're at liberty to talk about that. <laughs> no, no it, it's, just, it's just one of those odd scenarios where you had a, a defensive lineman holding on a pass play. I, I know 
that's one of the first times I've been in the scenario where that that's been called and just just what it was. But the the one thing, just like we tell our players, we, uh, we have a one and no mindset. So you got to keep playing. Uh, the things are going to happen all the time. You have to be all about making sure you have the solution to everything and continue to keep playing. Devon Banks and Jamie on Green, they're just so young, you know, and sending them into the Rose Bowl, first road trip away, school has started, and then that kind of a quarterback out there. How tough was it on those guys, especially at such a young age? Yeah, you know, I, I think as, as someone who is green, th that's always going to be a challenge. But I think also from, from our standpoint, we know that we trust them on the football field and have ultimate faith that they're going to be able to go out there and accomplish their task, play in and play out. And with Devon Banks, he seems so aggressive at times, and he's had a couple personal foul penalties over the last couple of games. How do you tone that down without taking the stinger away? You know, it's, it, I think as a, as a staff, players, when we talk about recruits, we'd rather say, whoa, than sick them. So Devon is one of those guys you have to say, whoa, so we got to pull back the reins. We may have to put, a, um, put, the, put the shot collar on him, you know, here or there, just to be able to make sure that he can just uh, do his job and, and know that often there's a fine line that you're always walking, uh, which we call controlled rage. So there's going to be a fine line. So you got to know if the guy's out of bounds, like in his particular case, he's out of bounds, error on, on not being able to, to make the hit. Is Elijah Jackson available, or is he still working through injuries? Yeah, he, he, he is in a process where he is coming back more and more and more. So, so he'll be someone who will, who will be working back into the mix of things here coming up. Did, did you have anybody grade out well on the defense after this game? Uh, up front, um, well, we had Thule graded out very well. Uh, he, he, he probably played one of his better games. Up front, he, he did a great job of being able to attack the line of scrimmage, holding his space, knocking guys back, made, made a couple of plays. Uh, he, he definitely did his job, uh, for sure. It looked like Tua Taylor also got some time outside, not just inside. What is he able to do kind of outside? Because it looked like you guys kicked him out. At least a yeah, little bit. Uh, he's able to collapse the pocket. When you have someone who is big, physical, and aggressive, they can collapse the pocket, which is exactly what you needed with an absolute running quarterback. When you do have a game like that where you have some young guys who, who struggle a little bit, how do you go about continuing to instill confidence or getting those guys in a mindset where they go into a game on, on Saturday thinking that they're going to succeed? Well, the, the one thing that you, if we all know that we are, all we are is teachers. So from our standpoint, every moment is a teaching moment. Just even from our game, that, that's one of the main messages that Coach DeBoer used for, for the football team. The, the, the biggest lesson is to learn from this experience that we just had. So from, from us as coaches with some of those young players, we utilize those moments as teaching moments just as it happened during the game. So we still have to understand that teaching them, showing them the how things are accomplished, how you play, how you make your plays, and, and how to be able to be in position to be able to make those plays. What do you see so, from ASU? A, a very skillful and athletic football team. Uh, the, the one thing that, that, that stands out for sure, they've been able to move the ball, they've been able to put points on the board, they've been able to get up and down the field on every team that they've played thus far, and, and they have a very respectable skill level on their team on offense for sure. What does Emory Jones kind of bring to the table for you? <laughs> uh, another nightmare for guys on defense. <laughs> no, um, he, he brings a very strong arm. Very, it reminds us of, of, our, of our quarterback here in Mike Bennix. Strong arm. He can make all the throws. Uh, very athletic. Um, doesn't run as much, but when he needs to run, he can take off and, and get them uh, and get their plays extended. So, so he, he does a very good job of being able to manage the offense and, and what they need him to do. Typically, a game like this is played at night down there, especially this early in the season. Do you get into the Dempsey Center and crank up the heat to get ready for a game like this? No, one, one thing that we talked to our players about, and Coach DeBoer talked about this um, with, with the guys here the other day, is it's, it's all about hydration. And there's kind of a four-phase process that we go through when it comes to the rest, hydration, nutrition, and recovery, where you, th this has to be a premium this week, making sure that, that you get your body built up and ready for a little more heat. Uh, being able to play down there at, at 1 o'clock in the sun. Braylon Trice on the first series made a couple of disruptive plays. Did they make some kind of an adjustment? Because it just seemed like you weren't getting the quarterback after that first series like you were on the first one. Yeah, there, there was a, a little more max protection things where they kept the tight end in a little more, chipped, chipped a little bit here and there. And that, that, that's kind of what it was.
With Emory, do you guys look back at the Florida tape, or is it just primarily with ASU? M- more, more ASU. The the Florida things that we saw was just seeing what his skill level was. That the ASU is going to be uh, honing in on the, on the scheme things that they do. Anything else, Coach Inge? All right, short and sweet. Thank you. Go dogs! Thank you. You guys have a great day. How we doing? Good. When you look back at the tape, when you saw the Bennings' interceptions, just what did you? What was the message to him during the game? And then when you guys look back at the tape, is there anything different there? Anything different than what we saw initially? Uh, my message to him was just keep working through his progressions and don't force a ball, which he knows. And then. Uh, during the game, you know, he, he got a little flustered there in the second quarter, obviously. And my message at halftime was just, you got to stand up. And when the protection is not perfect, we still got to make great decisions. And Mike knows that. And he owned that and did a good job moving on from it quickly. And I thought he came back and played a really, really good second half. Um, really played a good football game except second quarter. So, uh, but going back through it, it was... It was the same thing we thought live during the game that there was a couple reads. You just need to stay through his progression, move on from a, a decision that wasn't good, go to the next option, and, and just play through it. Ryan, the fumble by Wayne towards the goal line that led to the safety. Was UCLA kind of did to you what you did to Michigan State a couple weeks ago with that sequence there. And was it just a matter of him just taking his eye off the ball? That was, yeah, unfortunately, that was exactly what it was. And, you know, trusted Wayne. Uh, a ton, you know. Obviously, toss plays back there. Are, there's there's a certain element of risk, obviously, and uh, I, I really we hadn't even had even a bobbled one in run mesh, so it really didn't even register to me that that was going to be an issue. Um, but yeah, he got his eyes up on his blocks right away. We had a good too high look to run the football to, and and uh, unfortunately, Wayne took his eyes off for a second, lost track of it, and and uh, dropped the ball. What led to the uh, flip flop of? Kirkland and Fatano, was it one of the other uh, that forced that move? No, I think, uh, you know, both of those guys obviously are, are elite players, and I think Jackson's size on the inside helps us out a lot, and I think Troy's athleticism on the outside is pretty advantageous. So we just tried to utilize a couple of their strengths going into that game and felt like that was going to be a good option. And, and also for Jackson uh, on his way back, you know, getting into game shape and things like that, playing on the inside is is a little bit easier from the foot speed standpoint as far as starting out, and, and he's just... Um, like I said, a big, powerful kid on the inside. Would they flip back at all? At they could. They could eventually. You know, I think we just have to keep playing it out to see, you know, where Jackson's at, honestly, is just let him keep playing and getting into shape and, you know, getting comfortable and things like that and see where it goes. But we'll, we'll always keep pushing the limits on that and try to find our best lineup. Would you agree that that's a, a rare move, taking a two-time all Pac-12 offensive tackle. I know he's been injured, so that factors into it. But still, it just seems that was really a rare move to move somebody out of a position where he's been really decorated, I guess. Well, two parts to that. One, uh, had a lot of film evidence from before of Jackson being a really good guard as well earlier in his career. And then the second part, um, anytime you're moving people on the offensive line, less moves is better. And when you can replace one guy or insert one player into the lineup instead of two different spots, um, I think that that can always help from a communication standpoint. We asked Coach DeBoer you know, after the game um, if that would continue with uh, Jackson inside. And he said he needed to look at the film and see how they graded out, whether that's going to continue or not. How did those two guys grade out in the situation? Yeah, Jackson played really well. He was our lineman of the week. Um, I thought he was really firm on the inside and, and that's one of the things I think people like to talk about tackles a lot but for the quarterbacks to keep the interior of the pocket solidified where you don't drop your eyes immediately is really important I thought Jackson did a great job with that I think um, I thought Troy played well he didn't play his best game but um, he played well and again going into the game we knew 15 was going to be one of the best guys in the conference and, and uh, had his hands full of times with that but I don't know that it would have been, you know, better necessarily with Jackson out there because 15 uh, a fast player and can move in his athletic. So you, I thought they were good. Sorry, Coach. Did, did you consider at all at halftime flipping them back, or was that just a no. that's what we're doing? No. 
not at all. Again, I, I didn't feel like uh, moving them. I think it would have been even harder, honestly. I thought that uh, the skill set matched up better with Troy on the outside than it did Jackson. I'm curious, your, your communication style when you're on the headset with Mike after those interceptions or even at halftime, how would you describe how you convey your message? Is it the same calm, cool, cool collected? Do you get fiery? How do you kind of, how do you, would you describe how you? No, we're rule 10 and our quarterback 10 commandments is calm and chaos. And so I think if it, you know, my communication with Mike is um, hyperactive or going crazy, that that's not going to help get him back to the place where he needs to be, where Mike operates at a really, really high level when he's very level-headed. And he does a good job, you know, of, of not playing the last play or getting stuck. And that was really my message to him. Like, hey, you just got to get back on the horse and you got to leave that decision, um, you know, where it was and leave it in the past. And I thought he did a good job of that. You know, it was halftime was... It came at the right time where I could sit down with him and kind of get him recalibrated a little bit, and um, and, he, and he did an awesome job with that. You know, he, he made a couple of throws, and then one in particular, um, a first first down throw to uh, it was Rome over on the left sideline in the same, you know, kind of section where really he thrown both of his picks to his left, you know, and and he stood up and made an incredible throw and you know kind of showed no fear on that. I thought that was, you know, evidence that he was moving the right way again. You guys had a burn of timeout right before a kickoff, or right after a kickoff, sorry, after a change of possession, late first quarter. It, it, it looked like there was some kind of confusion and some frustration from the sideline. What was, what was going on? Yeah, just inefficiency on the exchange. It, it was bad. You know, it sucked. I, I, that's embarrassing, and that stuff can't happen. You know, just bad communication on the sideline, guys not listening um, as well as they should have. It's one of the points of emphasis. we got to be better off sideline, and that, that's the kind of error that can never happen. Did you see LA do anything different than you'd seen in the first four games? Uh, yeah, they, they had a couple different uh, coverage schemes that they put in as far as uh, how much they showed or used of it. They went against some of their tendencies as far as uh, open coverage. But I think some of that was, you know, we, they went closed coverage and gave Rome an opportunity to be one-on-one, -on -one, and we took advantage of that early. And after that, they started to play a lot of shell and uh, playing over the top of us a little bit more than they had. I know Rogers Young, you know, he's had a few penalties, but there was a penalty on your last drive on sportsmanlike conduct. I was trying to figure out what that was all about. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, honestly, I did not see it. I was looking at my call sheet for the next call um, when it happened, and evidently, you know, and I trust the guys, you know, there was uh, some altercation after the play, and, and some of the guys were exchanging words, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, and they kind of, you know, had their hands on Mike or were getting in Mike's face, and um, I think a couple of the guys got in there to separate it and it really wasn't anything too animated and, and they threw the flag, you know, and I think our message to the guys is we just can't live in the gray area, you know, especially down there. I mean, that was, we overcame it, but that was a pain in the butt. I mean, we were talking about whatever it was from the six yard line versus the 21 yard line, I believe is what it was. And that's, you know, it, it wasted time too. That was, that was a problem. We overcame it and ended up scoring, but had to take, you know, more plays to get in there. But most of the time, I think our guys make good decisions. But, you know, that's that's one of those going into any game. I think you just have to know people are going to try to induce you into those things. Did Roger get a little flustered? He got flagged, I think, three times, actually, besides that, that call we're just Yeah, I, I think Roger did a good job of playing through it. I mean, he was frustrated for sure. Um, he was upset, you know, with himself. And uh, for a young offensive lineman, the, the message is really clear. Uh, once that happens once, it's kind of blood in the water. And once the officials see it, they're, they're human, and their eyes are going to tend to avert to that and look right at them. So, you know, I had to get Raj cued into that, that, hey, you know, they're going to be looking at you, and it might show up more. So just had to get him calmed down and, and uh, you know, recognize what was going on out there. But I thought he battled. I, I really did. You know, I don't think he played his best game. I think there was – um, a couple oversets he had and things like that, but I was proud of the way he just kept on it. You know, some guys get really down. I don't think Raj ever dropped his eyes or, you know, got despondent in the sideline. I mean, he's the first guy in helping guys off the pile. I thought he played hard, so he'll he'll learn from that. Yeah, Tano got flagged for a hold, and when I looked at it again, it looked like he had to do it or else uh, Penix was going to get – just, you know, there's going to be a real bad shot on Penix. And I almost thought if there was ever a good penalty, that might have been one. Did, did you see that at all? 
Uh, yeah, I thought if he was in a little better position, it, it, that probably wouldn't have happened. But he got himself a little um, in a bad spot and then ended up having to potentially do that. But, I mean, you never want free shots on your quarterback. At the same time, you just want to have good eyes and be in good position. There's been a lot of discussion positively about how this offense sets up so many receivers to have a good day and it can be so many different each time. We haven't seen JP the last couple of weeks be a real factor. Is that more of a scheme situation or is there a reason that we, he hasn't shown up quite as much since that Michigan State game? Yeah, it, not necessarily a scheme. There's definitely opportunities for the Z to get the ball in the game plan. Um, just sometimes it's what presents, you know, and, and in this game, uh, especially the way Rome's been playing too. There's there was a little bit of that where you just keep feeding the hot guy a little bit where he's the guy that's making hard catches, even if they're just five yard catches on option routes and he's extending his arms. Um, but no, there's nothing wrong with JP. He's not doing anything wrong or anything like that. Just it's really how the game plan presented. There were some throws and things that they took away from um, that particular receiver that we had to go to somebody else. What do you see from ASU's defense? Uh, they got really good D tackle, number four. Um, he's physical. I thought they played really, really hard. I don't think they they look like a team that um, doesn't have a head coach or as woe as me. I thought, you know, that was a fourth quarter football game with USC. If you watched it, um, you saw that that was a one score game deep into the fourth. And I uh, thought their kids played really hard. I didn't feel like there was quit on film. And I'm not just saying that. I, I think that's a testament to the guys down there doing a good job of trying to keep those kids pointing in the right direction. And Coach Andrews talked about footing was maybe a bit of an issue, at least for the defense on Friday. You guys don't have a grass practice field that you can practice on. Correct. Does having played on grass now and then going to grass again this weekend, is that kind of – Sure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That, that helps you, though. I mean, you have experience now. And um, I, I thought, the, at least offensively, I thought the guys did – a good job of getting out of the locker room early, going out there playing some catch, making cuts, and um, I honestly didn't feel like that was a that didn't play a, a role in the guys, like any mishaps or anything like that. I thought they did a good job, and that's good turf. I mean, I'm sure Sun Devil Stadium is the same thing. So, uh, but having that experience and knowing what it takes before the game, and you know, getting all those things ironed out is always a plus. When, when you're going to play a game that probably will be in the 90s in Arizona, does that affect the way you think about tempo or pacing or anything that you do offensively? Uh, no, no. I mean, you have to play it out and see if it does, you know, but you're you're counting on your guys being in good condition and, and taking care of hydration the right way. And um, I'm sure that there'll be, uh, there'll be an element of acclimatization where the guys will have to get used to that and realize how warm it is and things like that. They'll definitely be a piece of that but you know we hope that we wear them down not the other way around let's just if i'm not seeing things correctly please correct me but it just seems like michael wants to stay in the pocket and he hangs in there a long time and when he does bail it's either the right or the left but it seems real effective when he kind of steps up in the pocket um are you, is that something that is just a kind of his dna that he doesn't like to step up in the pocket are you saying the same thing i am oh no i think mike has uh um, really, really good pocket awareness, actually. And I think in a great way, he's going to be a guy that will, as you described, hang in there and try to make the throw as long as possible. Um, when you're playing a team that, that, you know, went into a lot of too deep coverage and things like that and had droppers and things like that, then you just got to remind him, which I did at halftime, like, hey, just be ready if, the, if it presents. Use your legs and, and get out of there. But... Um, I think Mike actually is pretty innate at, you know, understanding where to slide in the pocket. And when it's soft in the middle, he'll slide up and take off like anybody. I think he did a lot of that actually in fall camp. Um, and then scrambling back out to his left or right, depending on what they give him, uh, is good. But he, I think he's a guy that will fight to make the throw, you know, and, and where you almost have to remind him like, hey, just if they're giving it to you with your legs, take it. And, uh, and you only have to tell him once and, and he'll see it and go. Kalen, Kalen said that um, this team hadn't really faced adversity going into this football game, and it seemed like you faced it in the second quarter and came out of it. Is that is that a fair assumption? Yeah, just speaking offensively, I was, um, I mean, I was crushed after the game, and, and it, you know, I think the guys were not. I think I know the guys were. They were absolutely devastated. Um, from my view, you know, I'm not down there on the sideline, but talking to the guys on the headsets and coaches, 
uh, they, they fought the entire time. And, you know, I told them the, the toughest thing would be coming out of halftime, you know, if the defense gave up a touchdown, you know, which obviously they didn't want to do. Um, but UCLA goes down and scores, and we have to block that out and just go do our job and answer. And uh, I thought doing that, that first drive out of halftime, showed a lot. And, and really, you know, the character of this offense, I thought, built a ton in the second half. There was absolutely no quit. They were fired up in the locker room at halftime. They knew that they could move the ball on them. We'd only, you know, really had self-inflicted wounds. You know, even the punt, we had a conversion on a short yardage and then ended up with a penalty and went backwards and got behind the sticks, which we hadn't done all year. And that's what we've really done a nice job of is, you know, staying ahead. But I thought they were... Uh, there was absolutely no quit in them. Um, you know, they couldn't wait on Sunday, honestly, to get together and talk about what happened and and get back to work. You know, they, they were embarrassed, they were hurt, you know, and they're fired up to go back out there and prove that they're different. Anything you would have done differently? Brett? Oh, man. <laughs> There's, yeah, I mean, I could go down my laundry list. There's always something. <clears throat> but I, I thought that the game plan, um, what was nice, and I think what the guys saw was that anytime on offense when things aren't working, what you don't want to have is not, not have the ability to have answers. So if things aren't working, you start going to other concepts or maybe different looks offensively that you can actually, you know, start moving the ball more proficiently. But I, I never, I really didn't feel like we, there was a time where we didn't move the ball with the exception of one time, like I mentioned, that we punted. It was all self-inflicted, you know, and that's where, you know, it just, that's where you got to, you got to really make sure every possession counts. And even at the end, in the end of the third quarter, uh, beginning of the fourth, where we were taking some longer drives and it was taking a little while, you know, just had to really ensure that we got a score. You know, and, and explain that to the guys like, hey, there's going to be some chunk yardage plays and it's going to take a little bit because of how they're playing us. Um, just stick with it. And they, they went right to the plan. So being able to provide answers for the kids is is number one. And then letting them know, hey, on this next possession, um, we're going to have to pick it up a lot more. And they did. They went 93 yards and three minutes and 59 seconds and, you know, scored and got us within a score. And um, I, I, I just I couldn't have been more proud of how they responded. Um, there's no, you know, silver medals they hand out at a football game, unfortunately. But uh, the guys, they got the right mindset. With Rome, what, what you saw in film from him last year to where he is now, how much different is he and how good is he? Rome? Oh, yeah, he's, uh, I mean, he's really good. <laughs> I'm glad he's here. I love him, man. And I, I think that he's growing every week, I'll say that. I, I don't know that I could speak to last year. Um, but just what I see out of him every week, um, it never surprises me, honestly, because of the type of preparation that he puts in. I don't know if there's anyone on the team that, that prepares as hard or is as ready to play as Rome is every given week. So uh, I'm super proud of him. I, I couldn't be more fired up that he's here. Hey, Ryan, just going back to what you said, you always have to have answers um, on offense. Just how important is it, what was it for you to understand your personnel and then your continual growth so that you can change mid-game without changing who you are? Yeah, it was, you know, that's obviously been a process from spring to fall camp to now. And, and um, obviously as a staff, we've got a pretty good grip on that. And um, I, again, I'll, I'll go back and compliment the players and their ability to you know, work through different parts of the game plan and get to, hey, we're going to go to more of these type of throws and these type of concepts when we're going to boom, they don't they don't even bat an eye. You know, they can flip right into that and still be really productive. So I think that uh, the guys have been able to see the system work uh, a multitude of ways, both when we're up and now when we're down, uh, there's some there's some huge growth opportunity and that was really my only message to the guys other than, you know, I'm sorry they lost and, you know, this sucks and we're all part of this together and it hurts, but do not let this pass without taking this lesson and knowing the things that have to happen throughout the course of the week um, that we can't come out, you know, like we we come out and we, we give up a TFL on the first play of the game and we got that thing dialed up, you know, we missed two blocks and we go into second 11 and we forget emotion. You know, there were some things early on that that uh, I think 
it was good for us to have to endure a little bit and overcome. So the same thing with, with uh, turnovers and things like that, we got to learn from all those and realize that, you know, all the answers are within the system and with how they play. The early kind of miscues, is that no excuses, but is there something about the first row game? And Man, I hope not, you know, <laughs> but maybe, you know, potentially, you know, maybe it was, uh, just being out there, and, and uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't really tell you that. The guys, like pregame and in the locker room, I thought everybody was really dialed, did a great job, you know. And even I was thinking back to our, our Wednesday, Thursday practice, specifically our Thursday one, you know, a shortened week that's a little bit of a hybrid practice, and they did a great job. It was one of our better practices of the year. I thought they were really dialed. So. Uh, we, we definitely have some things in store this week for the guys to try to make sure that they're more ready uh, for a road game. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Thanks Brad. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Do you answer? No. That was good. That was so good. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. Um, before we talk uh, UW football, I just want to first um, uh, say a couple things. Uh, just our thoughts and prayers are with the uh, family and uh, friends of Re Re Rick Redman and, um, you know, his passing and through this difficult time. We're thinking about you. Um, he was obviously, uh, you know, more than just an All-American, um, did so much for this university, contributor in so many ways. So our thoughts and prayers are with uh, the family and friends of Rick. And uh, the second thing is I uh, just want to say congrats to the Mariners, you know, just, uh, you know, the vibe, uh, the positive vibes uh, being in the city. You know, um, really fun to see. And uh, they've done a great job uh, getting to this point, battling and fighting and uh, building. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's part, part of being part of this community. You know, it's cool to see. And we're trying to do the same. You know, we're trying to add to those positive vibes in the athletic community and, and uh, you know, wish them the best here going forward in the playoffs. So um, as far as the game, um, just I think the biggest thing is just in the second quarter, um, we just dug ourselves a hole. And uh, there's some things in that second quarter that, uh, you know, we, we also did to where it could have been worse. Um, you know, a big stop there with about 30 seconds to go in the second quarter uh, when they go for it. Um, you can see they're really trying to put the nail in the coffin uh, going into that half. And, uh, you know, our defense stepped up. We've been actually really good in short yardage situations. Our third down problems and fourth down. Fourth down has actually been not bad at all. But uh, third down has been more of a, a thing, uh, you know, in the longer downs where you, you, you expect to get off the field on a higher rate. So, um, you know, I think a lot of it revolves around uh, penalties, uh, you know, from a team aspect. And I think we can do a better job communicating um, defensively. And that would have helped us out in a, in a few things in a few areas, but um, definitely a, a, they're all growth moments, wins or losses, um, definitely a growth moment. Um, you know, I had no, I, I don't want to say I didn't have an idea in my gut. I felt I knew what, how our, what our response would be, um, whether it be at halftime or what it would be, you know, coming back yesterday. And, um, you know, the character of our team, you know, will be revealed. And uh, I think uh, a lot has already been, you know, shown to me uh, of what that character is all about. Um, I was proud of the guys, the way they fought, you know, uh, to the very end. Um, the belief felt that there was, um, you know, um, ownership after the game, but also during the game, just, uh, you know, not this, not this sideline that's just um, in disarray, you know, just focused and continued to adjust and move forward and, and uh, try to give ourselves a chance. And so, um, um, I think a lot of those things, um, you know, showed up and, you know, uh, when the right attitude and effort uh, c continues to come forward, we can be better because of it. And that's uh, a lot of the message that we had yesterday. So, um, you know, yesterday was good practice, get back on the field. Um, they need that. You know, we got to put that behind us, that game, uh, learn from it and move on, flush it, accept it, own it and uh, go one and oh. And tomorrow will be a really uh, big day. Um, I can, you know. I know uh, even in our Friday, Thursday night meeting, um, talked a lot about just uh, always our response to adversity because that's what we talk about a, a lot. And uh, I just think we've been so good in that area. And uh, this will be another test to see what our response is.
Hey, when, uh, last year, when this game was played, Washington didn't have a head coach, and this year, Arizona State doesn't have a head coach. Colorado and Wisconsin fired their coaches on Sunday. Do you, do you have a concern about your profession right now with just the quick trigger and midseason trigger? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I understand. I, I don't know if, which way to, you know, where I stand. I understand why um, there's reasons, you know, for – you know, universities to go this route and and try to get uh, the next person in place. Is, uh, you know, a lot of it revolves around recruiting and and all of that. But um, you know, it's hard on the student athletes. There's no question. You know, it's hard on them. They go through a lot, um, and so. Um, no matter when that change happens, whether it's at the end of the season, um, but you know, these different universities are going through, uh, you know, things uh, with their student athletes are having to, um, you know, having to just uh, continue to push forward. And, you know, I guess with Arizona State, um, you know, there, there seems to be some, a lot of positive vibes still, you know, within the team, they're playing hard. And, uh, you know, that can go both ways, I guess, uh, you know, you know, the clean slate for a lot of these guys. And I think that's what many interim coaches do is, is wipe the slate clean. And, um, you know, I think that might be a little bit of the situation here. They're playing hard and, and uh, they're pushing teams, uh, you know, like this last week to the fourth quarter. And, um, you know, they got good players. And so, you know, we got to make sure uh, we're on our best and our A game. There's no reason we shouldn't be based on, uh, you know, taking a loss this last weekend. And then you had, a, I think it was the first half where Brady got called for a tripping call on the yeah. kickoff return. Looked like it saved the touchdown. Yeah, I, I mean, I was kind of, it happened really fast. And I, I, at first I was like, really? Like we needed to do that? But then watching the film, we really needed to do that, you know? And so, um, you know, uh, that's not, that everyone, everyone I think gets in that spot and there's a different reaction. And uh, probably with his background and what he's done, uh, you know, um, in, in the game of soccer, you know, whatever it might be, I mean, that's the instinct. And so um, you take guys through tackling drills and you try to show them how how it's supposed to be done but uh you know when it's happening that fast and all of a sudden there's a man you know kind of uh not necessarily right in front of you but someone you got to get down um that was his instinct and obviously not the right one it's a penalty but uh we needed to get the guy down somehow yeah. I mean, there are some folks that would say teach that you know college football rules versus the nfl a guy, spot foul versus 15 yards a guy's beat just grab and throw him down yeah. is that what you want your players doing I mean, I would rather, much rather, and we'll teach, you know, continue to teach the the, the tackling. We did not condone that that was a good move on his end, but we got to do a better job of making sure it doesn't get to him at that point. And, um, you know, just continue to show him how he, uh, you know, he'll learn from it. It's the first time he's probably ever been in that spot. Yeah. And then Rudd was asked about the fumble by Talapapa, the, the toss near the goal line. Yeah, it, it's typical fan would say, why run that play there? that close to the end zone? I, 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 it never even crossed my mind, honestly, after that happened, that that was a risky move. Um, I just think that, um, I mean, we would really have done a lot of risky things already this season, I guess, if we were considering that something that uh, is putting us at a, at a big risk. Um, you know, we've done things where we've been on our own one and the way we've thrown thrown the ball and, and so forth, uh, you know, probably more more risk to that. So, um, I mean, you know, a shotgun snap or under center more risky, right? The exchange uh, when it's happening that fast, I mean, what is more risky? So, um, you know, zone reads, you know, we run a lot of zone reads back there and we're near and gun. Almost every play has some type of read element. So that to me, there was no read. Um, there's no indecisive, like, what should we do? We're just literally tossing and we just got to execute the toss. With the kickoff coverage, with the tripping call, you know, there had been a lot of progress in seeing the kickoff coverage the last couple of weeks. What was the breakdown there? Yeah, guys just can't be hesitant. Um, you know, when we watch the film and, and you know, um, there, there's maybe a guy or two we can flip around. Um, you know, it's schemed up to where one one guy's uh, flying down and other guys are, are folding in and, and you know, um, you know, one guy's waiting for another and they just got to both go, you know, because they all have a lane they got to get to. And, uh, you know, it gives a, 
you know, the returner credit, um, he made a nice one cut and got vertical. And that's the thing you don't want. Um, most returns, whether it's punt, especially punt returns, but punt or kickoff returns when it's, when it's going up the field, um, straight up the field, right down the pipe. Um, those, those are the worst ones, you know? Um, so we just got, you know, one guy here, uh, there, you know, need to be on the same page. Not, not that they aren't on the same page, just, we got to get the right guys. If there's a guy that's a little faster, we need, we need him to be the one that's flying down and, you know, fold in or, you know, base our scheme on, um, getting the right people in the right spots. And, you know, that's, that's a fluid thing. You know, everyone, it's obvious what our injury status is in a few areas. And so you, you don't get plug a different guy in and different things happen. This is ability to fit the ball into tight windows. How do you manage tailoring back to where he doesn't force it like he did with the two interceptions, but also not kind of dialing too far back to where he doesn't want to make that? Really, I mean, that's a, I, honestly, it's a really good question because we sit here and we, you know, put our stamp of approval on how he throws guys open, how he anticipates, and how guys are barely out of their breaks and the ball's out, you know. And so once in a while, you know, I mean, done the one, the, you know, the defender's literally spinning in the in the ground as the release is happening. And, you know, Mike's anticipation, um, you know, that, that's what he's trying to do, and that's what's made him so successful. So um, he learns from him to continue on and not force it at that time, especially knowing kind of where we're at in the game and, um, you know, the momentum and, and I think especially when he had thrown that second one, um, you know, being a little more careful with that, with that throw in particular. Is staying with Jackson inside and Troy outside, is that the right move? I think so. I really do. Um, I think uh, Jackson is just so powerful and strong inside. And, um, I mean, that it's, a, it's a major strength for him. And um, not only can he move people, but he keeps a, he keeps the pocket um, f further ahead of the quarterback, you know, further ahead of Mike. And so uh, we have the luxury, I guess. I would look at it this way. We have the luxury of having a guy like Troy um, to be able to play outside. And I think, um, you know, I'm not slating Jackson into a spot because I think he can play tackle and guard at the next level. But um, I think he's just so powerful, so strong. Um, you know, that, that might be a, a spot he ends up working to down the road anyway just because he's so good at it. After the film, what were your big takeaways on offense and defense? Um, the offense, uh, the penalties, really, you know, I mean, you convert a third and short and, you know, you get the holding call and it just takes you out of rhythm. The, the two turnovers uh, versus not getting any turnovers, those are, you know, when you're talking about um, eight point difference, um, you know, those turnovers and uh, we lost the explosive battle um, by just a, a couple, you know, and that hasn't happened up to this point. And so um, I think defensively, there's uh, things we can we can co we, we can just continue to coach and stress. Um, we've done a really good job in our communication. Um, and that's so important on the defensive side. And I don't know if we quite communicated at that level um, the other night. And so, you know, mixing and matching and, and um, different guys, I don't know if that leads to it. Um, you know, there are some guys that do a great job. It just needs to be all 11 that are on the football field communicating and reaffirming that, you know, this is my job. And, um, you know, then just it leads to confidence. Um, it's not like we had really a lot of blown assignments or anything or it's just – communication a community a team that communicates is usually a confident team and you're just triggering a little bit faster and you're playing a little bit faster when you know hey this guy's this guy's got me here this guy's got me got, got help uh you know or leverage in this area you know this is my job and so you know that's where we're going to be continuing to emphasize things that we've emphasized all all year long you just got to do a better job how close were Misha and Asia to coming back Mish Powell and Asa Jordan, how close are they? Mish um, will not be back this week. Um, there is a chance that Asa could be definitely be back. Um, almost put him on the depth chart. Um, just, um, you know, that kind of kept it the same just because we've, uh, um, we've played with that rotation for the most part. But... Um, Asa is doing, uh, he, he's doing more, not necessarily with practice last week, uh, especially since it was a short week. We needed to get guys the reps they needed who were going to be on the field, but um, he's doing more and more activity. Uh, and so, you know, with a normal week, um, there's, a, there's a chance he could be playing on Saturday. What happened with the timeout you had to burn after the kickoff? Yeah, you know, um, there's, 
uh, the play obviously we weren't ready to snap the football and I saw we were going to take a delay I didn't want to take a delay game to start the, the drive and um, you know there's uh, there's just a we emphasize it and you practice it and, and um, you know just in that moment the ball was on the opposite hash all the way across the field and we didn't do a good enough job of breaking the huddle and uh, all of a sudden the clock's ticking down and you know just reemphasize to the guys even right there in that moment guys you understand that the clock it's 40 seconds and sometimes there's a five second buffer I think you know after the ball goes into the end zone it's a touchback but it's only 40 seconds from the time the ball goes blown dead to, to when you got to snap the next play you know it's assuming there's no media timeout I think there's been a lot of media timeouts it kind of crossed my mind actually there's been a lot of media timeouts it seems after the kicks and we haven't been put in that spot as much but it has happened and we've done a good job so we just got to be better and then the explanation I guess if there was one on the holding personal foul Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, we submitted just for clarification, um, and we won't get that back until probably tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And so we've submitted that. Um, I, I I didn't. I was kind of questioning the call to begin with, but um, didn't really realize. I thought he went out of bounds further up, and so feeling that you know maybe just the 15 yards had been marked off you know because it was on the opposite sideline and he ran out of bounce and it was spotted i think on like the 34 or somewhere around there and so we'll get clarification on it you know but um we got to do just a better job of not you know hitting hitting uh, out of bounce i mean he was clearly out of bounce when you have a game uh, in the afternoon in tempe do you do anything this week especially or different to prepare for that, to prepare for the possible heat? Yeah, you know, um, having lived in northern climates and going to play games in the south uh, at different times at diff- in my career, um, you know, there have been places where you have an indoor and you crank the heat up and, you know, looking back on it, it's just like, what you need to be doing all week long in my mind and I'm sure there's someone that can give an argument the other but you need to be um, building a reservoir of you know and hydrating and that isn't just a hydration that takes place the day or two before the game Um, you got to build up that throughout the week and so you know if you're you know smoking yourself out uh, in a in a indoor you know to me you're working against the cause um and I, I also feel, having been in a hotter climate the last couple of years, the last four out of five years, that there really isn't a replacement. There isn't something that you can do to really give that same impact and effect. You just got to do a good job. And I spoke with the players yesterday. Um, we have to be better with just how we um, hydrate and, you know, throughout the week. And I know living here and moving here, I don't even do a good enough job personally during practice or during games because the weather feels cooler and it's nicer. And um, it's just part of the natural, you know, human nature. Um, so we really are stressing that with our guys. They got to do a good job all week, you know, because we don't want to have someone out because of cramps or anything like that or an injury um, because they didn't do a good job on Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, you know, just thought, hey, Friday and Saturday, I gotta make sure I'm uh, hydrating. Would you Would you like to have a grass field to practice on? I think it would be I think it would be helpful, you know, beneficial. Um, there's there's uh, you know get games like that we've had we have back to back, and I think it will help that you know we played UCLA and and uh, we play this game back to back. So I I didn't feel um, I was I was thinking about it throughout the week I can't say I was concerned but I was thinking about throughout the week but having been uh, to the Rose Bowl I know it's a really good surface Um, I thought there was maybe just a few spots on the field where you could see guys had slid a little bit but um, I know it's not as easy as just you know oh it's a good surface you still got to get used to playing on it but um, that would be beneficial I think it'd be helpful Um, but there's you know one or two games a year you know and uh, you know getting used to playing on turf um, is also important. So, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, you know, I, I don't think that was, had any role in what the outcome of the game was. And, um, you know, that experience will hopefully help us this weekend. And it seemed like, you know, you're three scores down and typically what you see from football coaches is they throw the game plan out the window, speed things up and start throwing the ball all over the place. But it sure seemed like you stayed within your game plan yeah. and stayed within your offense. And then it just started rolling. As yeah. What you did. Yeah, you, you have to. I mean, you know, and it's um, it's middle of the third quarter. And, you know, the, the possessions are going to be limited, but you have to have trust that the other side of the ball, and I think the last quarter and 
some change. Um, you know, they didn't score. They had 40 at that time, and they didn't score in the last maybe three minutes of the third quarter and the rest of the fourth quarter. Um, and so, you know, you got to have you got to have confidence that that uh, the other side of the ball is going to do their job. And we just, you know, there's no three touchdown. There's no whatever it was, 24 points. Is that what it was? It was 40 to. 16 right so 24 point uh touchdowns you got to put one put one touchdown on the board before you can put another and you know even if there's only one minute left in the game when you get your last drive um hey with our offense you know we believe we could go down the field and so you know keep putting the pressure on keep scoring um and i thought the offense did a nice job of just continue to churn first downs and put first put uh, plays together and you know sooner then later, all of a sudden, you're back in a rhythm. And, uh, you know, as that kind of happened, then the ball then started going down the field again a little bit more and bigger plays started being made. So um, I thought it was I thought it was good. And I thought our defense, you know, hung in there, um, you know, got a stop in the fourth quarter there to, to give us a chance to pull within one score. And, um, you know, the last the last part just kicking off, um, we had three timeouts. And so, you know, I still feel like that was the right decision. Um, I think the tempo was going to be slower and uh, their offense wasn't as as good, I think, when the tempo wasn't in play. And, um, you know, they just got a running quarterback that found a way to, to move the chains there at the end. And, and uh, he was tough to defend no matter when it was earlier at the end of the game. If you would have got the ball back in the, that last possession, would you have scored again? Yeah, I mean, we we scored every down. I think drive in the in the second half, um, if I remember right, you know. And so uh, that you know, we were in a good rhythm. Uh, we were fighting and we were battling, and uh, that's what I, you know, that's what I wanted to see. And I love uh, out of our guys. It's what I expected and was hoping for. And they battled uh, till the very end. I'm curious when it comes to your depth chart and the way that things work. There's a cliche about some guys being game players where maybe they don't practice as well, but they show up and the lights come on. Is that something that you believe in, that in terms of whether a guy needs an opportunity who maybe hasn't practiced as well and hasn't you know, been out there? No, not really. I think you need to, right, your consistency, your volume of work has to has to show up in practice too, you know. Um, there are guys that really can elevate and, and uh, find another level, I think, in games, but there has to be, you know, there has, there, there's got to be something that they've been doing in practice too uh, on a level where they're, you know, not just competent, but, you know, doing a pretty good job and helping us uh, have production, whether it be on offense or defense. So, no, I think uh, that you got to perform in practice. Um, we have too many, too many guys that uh, that do that well in practice to where they've earned the opportunity and they also, you know, are helping us be successful. What do you make of ASU offensively, Emory Jones? Or- yeah, I think Emory uh, Jones. Uh, just like many quarterbacks, I think, in our league, you know, cause problems with his feet. Um, you know, he can throw it. Uh, they got they got some uh, some skill around him. So um, many of the same thoughts, you know, uh, when you get ready to play UCLA now or, you know, that you see show up against uh, Arizona State. So um, I think in the games that, you know, like the Eastern Michigan game, you know, he just missed some, some balls down the field, he, you know, Guys were open. Um, they just didn't quite make the play. Um, he didn't quite make the throw. Um, they were playing from behind, and uh, they you know they've done that. Uh, they've had to do that quite a bit, you know, playing from behind. But um, you know, they they continue to fight. And uh, whether you know it's a different head coach in place right now or not, um, again, like I said earlier, I think that uh, maybe there's a clean slate, and they're just out there to make the most of the rest of the season. So uh, we got to bring our A game for sure. And then with DTR, the missed tackles, and not just on him, but in general on Friday, I think there was one play where he scored at the goal line and yeah. and Javion yeah. smashed into each other. Yeah. Is that an angle issue? Is that a footing problem? What was the kind of led to the tackle? Well, I think you got an explosive player that's really twitchy and can make a lot of moves. And, and uh, the, the more success he has and the time you get beat is something you, you don't want. You don't want them to remember, but it's something that's in the back of their mind, you know, and they get a little hesitant. I thought that happened a few times where we had a, uh, a player hemmed in. Um, I think at the end of the third quarter, at the end of the second quarter, um, you know, we had three kind of on one, and he pitched the ball to um, 
I believe to Charbonnet and uh, you know our guys were just a little bit on their heels a little bit hesitant and um, that was a time when we had a lot of players around the ball <clears throat> in general I think it's just we got to continue to pursue like we did the previous two weeks I thought our pursuit against Michigan State and um, st and it got even better against Stanford. Um, I thought that pursuit is something that was really becoming a strength. And you know, give uh, UCLA credit; they find a way to get you isolated in those one on ones. And you know, you got to you know, you can play zone and and get guys and rally to the ball, but you also have to mix it up because um, I know from our standpoint, if someone's just playing one or the other, you know, you'll pick them apart all day. And uh, so you try to throw in the right uh, call, you know, to change up uh, what they're seeing. And, um, you know, all of a sudden you do end up with some guys once in a while, one on one. And uh, they got to make that tackle and they got to do it aggressively and confidently. Um, but we got to get more guys to the football. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks,